morning. Thank you very much for joining us to this uh, webinar. I hope it will be of your interest. I am uh, the head of the infrastructure department at TEDx, which is a public body which depends from the Ministry of Transport. And also uh, we work for very uh, intensely for the Ministry of Environment in Spain. And um, we are happy to present the results of this uh, project uh, in Spain and for all the practitioners that might be interested in, in this topic. Okay, Ernesto? Ernesto? Yes, hello, yes, hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Ernesto Rodriguez. I am the, the head of uh, climate uh, modeling and evaluation at the Spanish Meteorological Agency. Uh, we have contributed to this uh, project with uh, climate information supporting the different uh, uh, prototypes. Thanks. Okay, so I am Denis Havlik. I work for Austrian Institute of Technology and I'm coordinator of the project. And uh, you notice that at the moment we have two people missing. Uh, we have some uh, some health issues at the moment in, in Spain. So uh, I expect that Jose Cubillo will uh, uh, join us shortly. And uh, at the moment we are not completely sure if Luis will make it or not. Yes, it would I be think very I... Ah, there you are, Luis. Okay, yeah. please. I'm sorry, I, I have not the, the, the screen, but uh, I'm uh, the web screen, but uh, I'm I'm here and I have some problem with uh, with the connection with uh, with my with my computer because uh, I'm not in the in the office right now. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I am uh, Luis Torres. I'm working uh, in MeteoGrid. MeteoGrid is a uh, is a small company, but a very dynamic company uh, that uh, is working on uh, on on meteorology and climate change and uh, in uh, in in uh, natural hazards related problems so the, it's uh, all i can yeah we have uh, uh, we have been uh, working in clarity in uh, coordinating the 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 spanish the spanish pilot so Luis is the driving force behind this, this traffic uh, application, and if everything goes wrong, he should be able to demonstrate it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if everything goes uh, well, uh, he should be able to demonstrate it. As you hear, he has some problems with network at the moment, but uh, usually he is the one demonstrating it. And so when we finish with these presentations, I hope this will be possible to do. Uh, as for the last missing part, Jose, uh, well, he is the head of the operation, so to say. Uh, Axiona is a big company which is in charge of uh, traffic infrastructure uh, management, and uh, they are the ones who really need all this. And they're the ones who are pushing it further in the business uh, level. So um, without further ado, let's go to the next step, which is now initial presentation will be done by me here, as we said. And uh, for a start, why are we even trying to do anything here? What are we trying to do? Uh, the underlying reason is the climate change. So uh, climate change is there, it's going to get worse, and therefore uh, especially in the south of Europe, the consequences are expected to be quite important with uh, uh, increase in heat extremes, increase in heat-related mortality, with more droughts, more forest fires, risk of biodiversity loss, and of course uh, invasive species. 
uh, more energy demand for cooling issues with summer tourism people not wanting to go there anymore because it's too hot in summer issues with uh, river flow with crop yields etc this is uh, kind of my pet slide and uh, what it shows is on the left side is how hot it was in 2003 uh, you may remember uh, the maybe not the, the year but uh, you may remember the event when uh, like 40 to 70 people uh, fought to be to die uh, within i don't know one or two weeks of this uh, very hot weather and this is how it looked like in that year. This is a number of hot days in 2003. And on the right side, you can see the worst case scenario, end of the century, uh, business as usual uh, scenario where we don't do anything for climate change or against it. And uh, what you can see here very clearly is, and this is a yearly event, please, yearly event. So what you can see this very here very clearly is that uh, there are more uh, hot hot days in this scenario here here in Spain you see in in France actually all over the Europe than in this catastrophic year 2003. And again, this is the worst case, but this is yearly. If we go for a, a middle scenario, RCP 4.5, and uh, for mid, mid of century, of course, the situation will not be as bad as this, but uh, still uh, we have occasionally, our predictions say occasionally, this kind of events will happen. Um, so worse than the worst case, what we had before is something which we have to expect. Now, clarity is, um, as you know, on its flag, uh, we want to make it clear what this climate change means in locally in Europe, in different parts of Europe, in cities, and also what we can do about it, again, locally. We are not talking here about changing the amount of CO2 we are producing in the worldwide. We are not talking about changing of the climate. We are talking about local activities which help us to survive and to thrive, although the, the global climate is changing. How? We have three levels on which we are working. Uh, one is a screening service, and today uh, it will be more, mostly about the screening service for traffic, traffic infrastructure. Then there are expert services, uh, which is uh, the fully fledged expert studies uh, concerning specific region specific issues. So in this webinar, we will be talking about traffic again in Spain. And there is a marketplace which will not be mentioned much in this uh, webinar, but there is a special webinar for it. Please do and take a look at it. Marketplace is a, a website where people who have needs and people who have offers can meet and there is automatic matching function. And it's, uh, in my opinion, very useful, but of course it's as useful as it's being used. So the more people use it, the more useful it gets. Now, first talking about the standardized workflows and reports template. One of the main results of the project was the adaptation of the so-called EUGL methodology, which you can find on this link. And uh, we have updated it to comply with fifth uh, IPCC assessment report. So in terms of terminology, but also to some level in terms of the workflow. <clears throat> and um, we have tested it both in expert studies and in our tools. And we are confident that this workflow can really be used uh, for basically any kind of climate resilience study. Next thing are these demonstration cases. So today we are concentrating on road and 
transport infrastructure, but we had uh, three more uh, demonstration cases, which were about urban infrastructure. And uh, just to give you some idea of the results of these. So for instance, this is Naples, and uh, this is estimated cost of the so-called ideal uh, uh, strategy for uh, improving the local climate. Uh, and uh, this is what it would be without it. This is how it would look like with it. And uh, these are the costs. So the interesting part is these costs are enormous. But when you look at how much it costs per quadrat square meter of open spaces, buildings, etc., and also when you think about it, that these costs are not going to be paid all at once, but within 10 to 20 years, then it's clear that this is something that is affordable, actually, for the city of Naples. And uh, it's also necessary, and they are already working in this direction. Similar situation in the city of Linz. This is a little bit different type of modeling, but the same kind of results. So if you look at the city of Linz, uh, I'm not sure which, which scenario this is, but we have made like three different scenarios and two different time scales. And um, OK, it's getting warmer. And if you compare this to the past, this is really much much warmer, many more uh, summer days than, uh, than uh, we had in the past. Then if we change the land use uh, by making the city greener, putting more water, uh, keeping the uh, open uh, corridors for wind, uh, and uh, having uh, like this sponge city principle where the rainwater doesn't just run away, uh, the result is, among other, that the cooling effect can be up to 25 degrees in hot summer days. And uh, this, uh, uh, of course, this is the maximum. Yeah? Um, and this really helps and uh, makes much of this uh, heating, which is expecting, uh, go away again. And the city remains uh, a livable place. So much about this. You will hear more about the traffic later. Now, the marketplace, I already said, it's a website. It's on marketplace, uh, my climate services you. And uh, you can just join and then uh, put in information in your profile, whether you're offering something or whether you're looking for something. And the system will help uh, people find each other. Finally, the self-services, I will describe the urban screening here in short. Uh, so it's available on CCS My Climate Service, both of them. And uh, this website allows automated or semi-automated screening of climate risks for urban and traffic infrastructure. Uh, how does this so-called advanced urban screening work? Well, we get automated downscaling to 500 meter uh, scale for hazards, for exposure and calculation of impacts. Simple to use, you get results within half, or half an hour. It's uh, obviously not expensive. I mean, there are some expenses to host it, but it's not huge. And it can be done in about 400 European regions. Actually, I'm, it may be interesting to show this live, just a moment. So I'm here as administrator, so I can see some data. And this is the data availability. So in all these green regions, like for instance, this here is Madrid, and this here is Vienna region. Uh, but you can see these regions are about 50 to 70, well, some maybe 30 kilometers around the city. There is quite a lot of them. So like here, this is Stuttgart. This here is, uh, I don't know what, uh, Podgorica, it's Montenegro, somewhere down here must be Athens, 
further north. Okay, I'm not so good in geography, but you get the idea. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so I will just say a couple of words more on this. Uh, this is first part of the of the um, of the of the screening. After you have done this, then there is also a possibility to choose some uh, uh, adaptation strategies and see how the impact parameters change. Um, some of these models have been truly well uh, validated, so we know for heat hazard that it's pretty okay, and exposure as well. Uh, the mortality impact is also uh, quite reasonable. Uh, some others are not completely validated yet, but we are continuing to work on this, and uh, we are now planning uh, implementation project with the city of Linz, where this will be further uh, nailed down to the region of Linz. And we hope to get uh, within a year or two really a working tool which will be used uh, on, on a daily basis for all the projects in that region and then to uh, replicate this to other regions in Europe. So from the prototype to the actual uh, working system. Now, this is all I had in this very short introduction. Uh, there are other webinars, uh, and there will be also a webinar where I will be describing <coughs> how to use the tool, so a tutorial uh, for the urban screening within a couple of days. Please join us if this is of interest for you. And now, I should give the stage to the next speaker, which, if I'm not wrong, is Laura, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, thank you very much for attending this webinar. And I, I'm going to explain to you uh, the work that we have been performing during this uh, a little bit more than of three years that we have been working the, in the Clarity Project. Very briefly, Dennis has already explained to us uh, what is the project. Uh, simply, uh, just uh, please keep in mind that the objective of the project was to develop uh, some kind of uh, tool that would be online. Uh, they are on the cloud. You can access, uh, have them on the internet. And these tools have the aim of improving the resilience of transport infrastructures and urban infrastructures. How do we do this uh, assessment uh, following the European Union guidelines that also Dennis has uh, commented? Uh, this is very important because it, this is the methodology that we have followed uh, and I am going to explain later on. Uh, we have these seven steps and we have tried to uh, stick to it as much as possible. Uh, I will be explaining now how we have um, taking into account each of these steps on, on, this, uh, on our transport tool. Uh, where can you find it? Uh, as Denise has said, it is available at myclimateservices.eu. We are also trying to implement the tool in the FedEx website, so we can also have access um, more directly. But it, we are still working on, on this. To begin uh, with my presentation, uh, I would like to explain very shortly why we decided uh, to uh, perform this pilot study in Spain uh, in, a, in a road section. Uh, we have a very wide uh, transport network. Uh, maybe some of you already know, but uh, just to give you some hint, we have more than 26,000 kilometers of highways and more than uh, 165,000 kilometers of roads. This is the state network, okay? We also have more than 2,600 kilometers of high-speed train. Uh, so we have a, a lot of network that we have to maintain in the best possible conditions. Uh, two years ago, uh, we already uh, performed a previous uh, study 
trying to identify what were the main challenges, the main climate challenges that we are facing as uh, road owners and railway owners. And uh, we uh, estimated that uh, already at the present moment, approximately 45% of the network is already suffering some kind of impact uh, related to weather events, mainly uh, rainfalls, but also uh, other um, issues like wind, snow, um, blizzards, etc. Uh, a very interesting conclusion was that 6% of the network, uh, we, I am talking now the, of the road network, was already suffering from important impacts. So uh, we decided that it, it was important uh, to identify what were the sections that are uh, mostly impacted and uh, what are those impacts and what things can be done uh, to try to uh, reduce uh, the impacts and um, make the network more uh, resilient. So from this work, uh, one very interesting lesson that we learned uh, was uh, the identification of the main impacts on the roads uh, because of climate events. Um, as you can imagine, most of these impacts are related to rainfalls and uh, consequently to extraordinary floods. Here we have a picture. Uh, it's quite common to have this problem when there is an intense rainfall uh, concentrated in uh, a small period of time. Uh, other impacts uh, we are very used to see in our roads, uh, we are talking about landslides and erosion, falling of materials of slopes, um, we also have problems with embankments with, when we are close to the course of a river, uh, problems of erosion of abutments and foundations on, on bridges and viaducts, and also, uh, very important, uh, we have to check the capacity of drainage works and the capacity of uh, road surface uh, drainage. Not only we have to think of rainfalls, but also uh, it's important to see the impacts related to extreme temperature. Now we are talking about the impacts to the traffic circulation, uh, maybe due to wildfires, uh, also related to snow problems. And uh, when we are thinking of the infrastructure, we also have to pay attention to pavement cracking and the appearance of plastic deformations on the road surface, uh, sometimes related to very low temperatures, sometimes related to very high temperatures. So uh, now going to the, to the methodology that we are going to follow and having in mind these things we have already, we had already okay. learned. Uh, the first step uh, was to identify the main hazards. Uh, when we talk about hazards, we needed to identify uh, the climatic on, variables. On my... Sorry? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. We have to identify what are the climatic variables that we have to um, assess. Uh, as I have already said, we are talking about maximum temperatures, minimum temperatures. Also very interesting uh, to pay attention to the number of days below zero degrees. Okay, uh, We are going to pay attention to in intense rainfall and to the fire, uh, probability of having fires uh, close to the roads. What do we have to do to assess these uh, variables? We have to define indexes that uh, will try to explain these um, this climatic issues. We have had uh, the support of uh, meteorological uh, institutes. In Spain, uh, we have been supported by IMET. We will have a presentation later on where Ernesto is going to explain to us uh, uh, what indexes uh, have been used in the prototype, what is the science science behind these indexes and also some issues uh, very interesting related to uncertainties. For the rest of the project, uh, we have also have the support of other uh, meteorological institutes that have um, calculated uh, this information for the whole EU Europe. With these indexes, we will be able to assess uh, both the road elements and also very important, uh, the affection to daily traffic on our roads. Uh, the next step uh, would be the exposure analysis. 
Exposure analysis means to identify uh, the road elements that might be impacted by climate events. For example, uh, we have here a slope that was identified uh, like a vulnerable element because uh, there may be some problems uh, related to uh, intense rainfalls. For these elements, we have to locate them on the um, platform that we have developed and uh, we have to uh, define uh, some attributes that are, that are going to be somehow uh, related to the uh, climate event uh, that we are going to assess. The next step is the vulnerability analysis. Here, uh, what we are going to do is for each element, for example, uh, the slope we were watching in the previous slide, we have to study the severity and also the probability of the climate hearts on the exposed element that we are going to, to study. Uh, we have to uh, assess uh, both aspects, severity and probability, in different time uh, scenarios, at present, at a medium future and a long future. Uh, this vulnerability analysis is a, a very important step in the whole process. It can be done uh, through vulnerability functions or it can be done uh, by means of the expert assessment. In the Clarity project for the transport infrastructure, uh, we have followed the expert assessment. Uh, why? Uh, because we understand that uh, if, uh, in order to have uh, vulnerability functions that are reliable, we need uh, to have a big database of uh, events and uh, consequences. For example, for the slope that we are uh, studying, we would need to have uh, some uh, registers where uh, we can relate uh, different rainfall intensities with the uh, consequences of this rainfall in this um, slope. Uh, the problem is that we have a, a lot of different type of uh, slopes with different heights, with different uh, materials, with different um, degrees of inclination. Uh, and, and having this database is an important effort that uh, we don't really have it for uh, the Spain road network. So uh, we have um, asked uh, different experts to assess uh, what were the uh, possible severity and probability uh, labels according uh, to the climatic information and predictions uh, that we have from our colleagues from uh, IMET. They have helped us to assess if the uh, impact was going to be low, medium or high. Then uh, the next step, which is the risk analysis. Uh, this is a semi-automatic uh, step because having the information uh, regarding the integrity and, uh, sorry, uh, the severity and the probability, we can assess if the uh, traffic conditions and the element is going to be, uh, is going to have a low, medium or high risk. This is done uh, by means of a matrix that can be calibrated by the road owners or the expert that takes part in the, in the study. Uh, then it's very important, uh, according to the label of risk that we are going to assume, we have to decide if it's uh, okay or if it's not okay. Uh, depending on the importance or criticity of our network, the label of risk that we are going to uh, assume is going to be different. And then uh, uh, if uh, the risk uh, is not assumable, we have to propose different adaptation measures. This table uh, was uh, done with a list of measures for the slope that we were watching uh, formerly. And there is a list of adaptation measures. Very important, uh, we should uh, make also an estimation of the cost of the measure and the expected efficiency of the measure in the case uh, we implement it. According to this assessment, um, it should be done a cost-benefit analysis and uh, propose an adaptation plan for our uh, infrastructure. Uh, in the case uh, that the measure is implemented, we can uh, uh, reassess uh, the risk in our uh, road section 
and uh, see if the improvements are going to have a positive impact in, in, in the study that we are performing. In any case, it's very important that this adaptation plan is integrated in the uh, maintenance strategies of uh, the road owner and uh, it uh, has to do with the conservation strategies that we are going to implement in our road. So uh, this is the process, uh, this is the work uh, we have tried to, to do within the project. And um, just before uh, closing this presentation, uh, I would like to insist that uh, this is something very interesting and we want to continue working in, in this topic. The strengths of the project, uh, I would outline uh, having a structured approach to this climate change uh, vulnerability assessments. It's not something difficult, but the first time you have to do this assessment, it's not easy, so I think it's good to count with this, um, with this structured approach uh, to do the assessments. Also very important, uh, we count with an online application that is going to support the whole process. Uh, very important, the help with the climate projections and uh, helping you to follow all the steps that have uh, to, be, to be done. And uh, finally, uh, for me, it's very important that uh, we as uh, road owners and uh, road practitioners um, become uh, used to um, include uh, this climate information in the decision making procedures. And I think it's going to help to have this more resilient and more adapted uh, road network and railway networks. So this is it from my side. Uh, please contact us if you have any doubt. And uh, I hope the rest of the, um, of the webinar will help you to, to understand uh, what we have been doing in this, in this pilot. Thank you, Dennis. Um, my, my presentation is uh, about the, the principles of climate information, how we produce and uh, use the information we generate uh, about uh, climate change projections. There are two or three main ideas that uh, are belong, uh, below this uh, information and I will insist uh, on these ideas. First, uh, point uh, uh, that I, I would like to, to comment is, is about uh, the future world. Well, we, we don't know how will be the, the future world in terms of uh, uh, concentration of uh, greenhouse gases. And as, as we have a, a, a high uncertainty, what it is uh, usually done is to present some kind of alternative scenarios. This is the, the so-called representative concentration pathways. The idea of these uh, pathways is to translate information of the future world in terms of concentration of uh, greenhouse gases and one way to concentrate greenhouse to, to, to show this concentration of this uh, greenhouse gases the most important is co2 but also methane and, and others is to express everything in terms of co2 equivalent and what we have here is a different uh, alternatives for for this uh, future. Uh, the the uh, different alternatives are uh, expressed with different numbers, 2.6 up to 8.5. This gives us some idea of the of the imbalance in the climate system. How uh, far away our system is from the equilibrium. 8.5 correspond to a system which is far away from the equilibrium because, because we have uh, emitted a lot of uh, greenhouse gases and 2.6 is a very close equilibrium. 
8.5 correspond to high emissions, uh, a, a very pessimistic future, and 2.6 a very optimistic and green future. We, of course, can translate this uh, imbalance expressed in, in, in units of energy, we can express it in, in terms of concentration, uh, parts per million of the uh, CO2, which is the, the, the main, the main uh, gas. Uh, this is for, for, for the pathways we have used so far. In the next uh, uh, IPCC uh, projections, we will have a combination of uh, socioeconomic uh, scenarios, socioeconomic pathways, and uh, imbalanced pathways. The, the, the representative concentration pathways. So we have uh, uh, for the next uh, generation of uh, scenarios we have a combination of these RCPs going from 2.6 to 8.5, going from low emissions to high emissions, with some representation of uh, the uh, uh, socioeconomic world. For example, we have the so-called SSPs, Share socioeconomic pathways. Here we have, for example, a world which would be based uh, in sustainability or uh, in fossil fuel development or uh, in terms of uh, will be mainly uh, characterized by inequality or regional rivalry or something in, in, in between, which is the uh, SSP2. So this is the next generation with would be the uh, the the standard for the uh, uh, next uh, projections. The next uh, the next ingredients are the climate models, uh, which are now uh, also named Earth system models, as they have a representation of the carbon cycle. Climate models are simply uh, the, the equation of the, of the different components of, of the system. Here uh, we have the, the equations for, for atmosphere, which are uh, used uh, for uh, weather forecasting and similar equations for ocean, for cryosphere, or equation for, for, for the biosphere, for vegetation, and for other components. These equations are uh, discrete, discretized and, and, and solved in, 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 a, in a grid which usually, and with the limitation imposed by, by the current generation of, of computers, they have a, a horizontal resolution of about 100 kilometers or 150 kilometers. Then the equations are solved in a, a very large computer uh, codes, very efficient and, and quick computer codes, and also some representation of processes of a scale smaller than uh, the, the grid square is also uh, in the so-called uh, parameterizations. So climate models are based on, on physics. This is the, the, the important message. Based on physics and solved with the latest generation of computers. So a climate model, as it is written here, is a numerical representation of the climate system based on the physical, chemical and biological properties uh, 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 an equation of its components. Also, their interactions and feedback processes are uh, described by, by, by this equation. The next idea is that the atmosphere, as, as we all know, is, is a chaotic system 
and also the climate system, including all the, the components, not only uh, atmosphere, but ocean, cryosphere, and, and so on. The system is, is chaotic. And for representing such uh, chaotic system, we, we need uh, uh, many, uh, many simulations, many re realizations of, of, the, of the system, of the equations. So we have the chaotic uh, nature, the uncertainties. Uh, we have uncertainties coming from, from the climate models. Not all climate models are the same. They have different uh, 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 ways of uh, discretizing the, the equations, different approximations. Also, uh, uh, downscaling algorithms are, are different. All these uh, steps uh, have uh, uncertainties attached. So in order to have a clear representation of, of the uncertainties, we need uh, to generate many uh, realizations of the evolution uh, of the climate system. Uh, with this many realization of the of the climate system, we have to uh, make use of a probabilistic approach. And in order to, to 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 fix the ideas of this probabilistic approach, I have use of of this uh, uh, pinball game. Here we have uh, different uh, uh, different balls. The, the, the evolution of one single ball is, is, is not uh, uh, relevant. What is relevant is the, the distribution we have here. And this distribution gives us some idea of the climate and some idea of the uncertainty in the description of this climate. If we have a very wide distribution, we have a climate with uh, high variability, or we may have a climate express with high uncertainty, uh, with the uncertainties coming from the sources I have uh, already mentioned. So if we want to, to uh, describe the climate, we have to describe this uh, distribution. Uh, this is for 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 the current uh, climate, for the current uh, situation. But uh, imagine that, that we have some perturbation. In 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 the case of the pinball, it could be some uh, tilting of 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 the, of the pinball again. This tilting, what is uh, causing is some uh, shifting of of the distribution. This perturbation could be associated to the uh, emissions, uh, uh, man-made emissions of uh, uh, anthropogenic emissions of uh, greenhouse gases. So what we have is one distribution and some perturbation which is causing some uh, modification in the distribution but always it's important to uh, have in mind that uh, we should uh, uh, have a probabilistic approach the next ingredient is the usage of downscaling as i have said uh, models have a uh, some maximum horizontal resolution of uh, around 100 uh, 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 kilometers. Uh, this is clearly insufficient for most applications. We we should uh, uh, try to to enhance this horizontal resolution. And in order to do that, we have two uh, typical techniques. One which is based on dynamical methods, which mainly consist on uh, nesting. Uh, high resolution uh, regional models nested in, in global models. The high resolution uh, uh, models 
are solved for the region of interest. And with this uh, dynamical technique, we uh, may easily reach for the case of Europe uh, around five kilometers, which is closer uh, to the needs of, of, more, of most uh, applications. We may alternative use uh, a statistical uh, algorithms which uh, 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 relates uh, grid squares from the uh, uh, from the global uh, model from the climate global model with uh, point values uh, and in order to uh, generate this function relating relating information from uh, 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 grid uh, points from models with observational points or, or of finer uh, uh, scale uh, uh, points, we need a, a long series of observations. So with these ingredients, the uh, emission scenarios, a collection of global models and a selection of downscaling techniques, we are able to produce evolution with some range of uncertainty, which correspond to the different uh, realizations. Uh, finally, we have to uh, distribute all this information in two ways, using our repository of information here most of the uh, of the data are numerical data and we also uh, uh, make use of a viewer this viewer uh, is uh, able to uh, present or and facilitate the, the the download of information for different applications and this viewer is uh, feeding uh, our a specific uh, uh, information system for roads. So uh, we have three uh, ways of distribution, distributing information, the repository, the viewer preparing uh, the, the information for different applications and the uh, climate services information system for road, which is able to read directly from the viewer. How is uh, the situation in, in Spain with respect to uh, uh, climate change projections? Well, our, our main interest is to populate as much as possible the, the simulations uh, uh, in order to have a clear and better a representation of the uncertainties and the distribution we appear in the uh, climate, including the uh, different types of uncertainty. Here in this uh, uh, screen, show the different uncertainties which are represented with different realizations. Well, what are climate indices. Well, climate indices are relatively uh, simply uh, magnitudes which uh, are used for uh, evaluating climate features that could be relevant for different sectors. Uh, for example, we, we all know that temperature and precipitation is, is, is very relevant for most of the sectors and are defining the, the climate. But not uh, all features of, of temperature are relevant for, for different applications. Here, what we have uh, to do for, uh, for the definition of climate indices is first to, to uh, identified road elements, for example, pavement cracking. This is one uh, 
one element of 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 their of the roads uh, which are affected by a minimum temperature and uh, for example uh, the temperature below zero or below certain threshold are critical for the state of pavement crack cracking the same for other road elements rotting or 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 reach of fire index for for maintenance um, and exploitation of uh, the the amount of uh, intense precipitation it, it it would be relevant for drainage in, uh, of of the roads so we have to select some indices which are relevant for the different uh, road elements what we have used for this project is to to use euro cordes projections but uh, of course th that that was uh, one election we also may have used other other alternatives we have used this uh, uh, euro cordes projection for for several reasons be mainly because it is some standard in europe they are uh, expressed in in the same format they produced uh, for different uh, scenarios, and uh, we have uh, computed for three different time periods. And also we have selected some uh, indices which are uh, relevant to different road elements. For example, stream uh, mean temperature sun percentile, height percentile, or, or uh, for uh, uh, maximum temperature or minimum temperature or daily temperature oscillation. Daily temperature oscillation give us uh, some idea of the uh, difference between maximum temperature at a daily time scale, uh, maximum and minimum uh, 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 temperature. And uh, as, as you can imagine, the, the asphalt, the road suffer spe especially in, 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 with this uh, high uh, uh, oscillation in, in temperature. So this is a very relevant uh, in this index. This is some example of, of outputs with, with different realizations coming from different global models from different regional models for downscaling and for the average here we have the RCP 4.5 and RCP 8.5 which co correspond to high emissions and the percentiles 99 of maximum temperature. We have a, a, a representation similar like this for for a collection of of indices so now let me give you some few uh, words about the the, the future uh, as uh, as i have already said uh, uh, this information it uh, comes from uh, from different steps. We produce a lot of realizations. We uh, 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 include it in the repository. Then we the, the information go to the to the viewer, and from the viewer goes directly to the uh, to our application for roads. If we uh, update information with new uh, IPCC cycles and with new downscaling, uh, almost immediately this information is inherited by the repository, the viewer, and uh, the, the the roads tool. New indices could be suggested by uh, by specific users, or in particular by users coming from 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 the road transportation and could be very easy easily implemented in the information system of of clarity and finally uh, let me insist in the idea that the uh, probabilistic approach is 
is basic, is essential, and uh, we uh, always uh, uh, intend to uh, have uh, the uh, the simulations populated with many members, with many realizations, we give us a better estimation of the uh, uh, projections distributions, projections PDF. And this is the main ideas behind this uh, climate uh, information feeding uh, our, our tool. Thank you. So uh, I've seen I've seen a couple of questions. So one question was about uh, how did you determine the sensitivity of uh, the assets for different hazards? So uh, how was this done? I know that this is not a simple thing to do. Yes, yes. I know it's that not in the end we decided to let uh, people uh, decide in the end uh, because they are experts, but there was quite a lot of work going in this direction. So maybe, yeah. Laura? Uh, this is not a simple question, as you said. Um, yeah. uh, if we have a look at the European Union uh, guideline steps, doesn't really um, express a sensitivity like one single step. So uh, what we have really done is uh, when when we do the the exposure assessment, we have to uh, take into account uh, not only where the element is, but also we have to um, take into account its characteristics, like for example um, how old well the element is, uh, the maintenance that has been uh, performed up to the date. Uh, and as I was explaining, uh, for a embankment or a slope, we have to take into account uh, the materials, uh, the height, uh, et cetera. So uh, this is, a, I would say, uh, this uh, sensitivity, uh, sensitivity analysis. Then uh, when we perform the, um, the vulnerability assessment, uh, it's when we incorporate this uh, knowledge that has been provided by the by the expert that might be the the conservation uh, staff uh, the uh, the road owner uh, it would be very interesting if we uh, can count in the team uh, with uh, for example some uh, geotechnics expert or some hydraulics expert if we are talking about uh, drainage works and uh, with this information uh, we can do uh, we can assess uh, the probability and the severity and uh, we do this in a, a qualitative uh, way because uh, we have uh, some uh, predefined scales uh, ranging from low to high and we explain uh, also what means each one of these labels but it's uh, something qualitative I hope it was more or less clear how we do this step. I hope so. Uh, so then there is this other question also for Magritte, Magritte uh, Van Marle, uh, which is about the climate change scenario. How are they validated against the station data? E.g., how it's based, uh, which Cordex models to include or not to include, especially for impact assessment for extreme events. The usage of all models might result in underestimation of extreme events. So uh, I'm not a climate expert, uh, but uh, I've been leading the project, so let me just start with uh, answering this partially. And the partial answer is that all of the in, all of the climate models that we have in uh, in CSIS, they all are a uh, assemble of models. So we have we have different models, and the average of them is uh, given out as a result. In addition to the actual result. There is also a possibility to take a look at the uncertainty, uh, so uh, difference between the models. Uh, and it's true, of course, that uh, we are not uh, getting the most extreme. We are getting kind of uh, average result, which is what we are advertising. But the user can easily find out uh, 
what is the difference between uh, the lowest and the highest uh, estimates. So I believe that this is quite uh, well the best you can do. But uh, maybe somebody else can answer this with more details. As I said, I am not a modeler. <laughs> Well, just just uh, an additional comment. Of course, if if, if we average uh, models, uh, we have a, a relatively good first uh, approximation to 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 the evolution of of certain uh, variable of certain index. But this is not enough. Uh, of course, it would be uh, much uh, adequate to have some estimation of uncertainty and going to the highest value and to the lowest value to have some uh, idea of, of, of the uncertainty. Some variables uh, show uh, less uncertainty. This is the case of temperature. But if we go to, to indices uh, derived from temperature, uh, some of them are increasing the uncertainty for example we may derive some uh, index based on the duration of heat waves for example this uh, uh, index is based on temperature but if we represent the duration of heat waves uh, using all sources of uh, information coming from global models and from regional models, we 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 see that the uncertainty is uh, rather uh, wide, rather big. So uh, to to have some idea of how wide is this uh, uh, uncertainty is is very relevant, and not simply to take the average value. To summarize, the average value to have a first hint of the evolution, and if we want to be more accurate, we have to 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 look at, at different evolutions, not only just one evolution, some average. And even if we have many of them, we will have a very clear representation of the distribution of the evolutions. Okay, in the meantime, I'm showing my screen now. I believe that you should be seeing this. Uh, for each uh, piece of data which we have uh, in the, in the so-called data package, we are also providing the complete description of how it's described, which is visible for users. So in this case, uh, the, sec the next question was which models. Uh, honestly, this is not telling me anything, but uh, for modelers, this is uh, probably uh, enough to understand what we did. So this was, uh, this for instance, was calculated by uh, Austrian uh, Central Institute for Meteorology. And these are the models which went into assemble. And uh, for each of, of, of data pieces which we have in, uh, in the data package, which are used for, for this kind of, uh, assessments, uh, all this information is available in the system. I hope this helps. Yes, and uh, for most of the variables, uh, we are not only providing the, the the mean value, but also the the statistical deviation of the, the of the values uh, between all the, the uh, between all mm -hmm. the models. So yes, uh, in, in order you can have a an, an idea of the uncertainty associated with uh, which is one of the scenarios. Yeah, that's what I already said. And uh, as Ernesto already mentioned, it's kind of pity that uh, we are not showing for indices also like, okay, what would be with minimum, what would be with maximum, what is the mean, the mean value. Uh, but it, it would kind of be a little bit messy to show all this on a screen. The data is there, we could calculate it, probably we should calculate it. Uh, we did not find a very nice way to present it as the problem. 
continue right now. Uh, well, uh, I, I think that Dennis uh, gave an, uh, an overview of the project and, and why the, the need of, of, of this into the getting into the into the into the um, research and innovation of uh, trying to develop an overall uh, yeah, system have, and methodology. We have, yeah. we have basically done all the presentations. Now uh -huh. we are looking for uh, you know real. Uh, Real yeah, real case. Yeah, real case. So what I wanted to show you right now is after the introduction from my colleagues and the and the explanation about why to invest uh, efforts on this. It's a clear example in a in a highway in a study in a in a seven in seventy kilometers uh, track of highway in Spain, of uh, transport infrastructure. Okay, just to give you an overview, what is the what is the what is located? Okay, it goes from from near Madrid. It's about uh, 35 kilometers away from Madrid, and it's the main uh, communication uh, highway, let's say, in between Madrid and Barcelona, which is located here. Okay, so it's just the main uh, uh, well traffic connection, and there's no other alternative at this point, at least with this uh, traffic capacity right now. And uh, well, how the methodology was designed and was also previously ex uh, explained by, by Dennis in, in the clarity approach and also by Laura about the needs of, 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 of this type of uh, research in, in transport infrastructure. And also uh, after explaining by Ernesto the, the climate indexes that we have been used um, to, uh, to calculate this into the, into the tool. So we, uh, uh, well, also the, um, uh, well, this is the, um, the, the system, how it looks like, okay, the, 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 the website. So we have uh, five different uh, um, steps, okay, as it was already previously mentioned. We have to, when we have a, a transport infrastructure, uh, first is uh, necessary to characterize the hazard to evaluate the exposure, to make a vulnerability analysis, and to make a, a risk and impact assessment. Okay, so first, how we uh, uh, how we have been um, worked with this uh, uh, with this uh, track uh, highway track. Okay, we firstly worked with the with the people uh, from the uh, maintenance service of the of the road. So this is a two lanes uh, a highway which goes from uh, uh, from uh, Guadalajara region to almost to the limit with Soria in the middle of uh, of uh, Castilla Castilla La Mancha and Castilla León which is a region in between uh, uh, well um, Madrid and Spain it's a rather high altitude uh, highway it begins in the first kilometer uh, of track at uh, nearly 800 meters of altitude that uh, it ends at uh, the kilometer uh, 135 at more than uh, 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 1200 meters of altitude so the winter maintenance it's a uh, it's a key issue in, in this track so we mainly went through the through the uh, road design and identifying the uh, possible uh, spots where the uh, the exposure so the exposure analysis, uh, we we went through the slopes and and we and different uh, asphalt characterization and 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 possible problems according to the experience of this track and the people uh, making the maintenance of this track uh, from the previous year. So we identified different uh, well uh, overpasses or uh, downpasses of the of the highway, all the drainage systems have been uh, identified and have been spotted into a into a table okay we identify it we uh, describe it uh, along the highway along the track uh, talking with the engineers with the designers and with the and with the responsible of the of the maintenance so this is the final uh, part of the of the concession so it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, well uh, a rather uh, high uh, traffic uh, intensity road. Okay, so once the uh, the the exposure analysis has been done, we uh, go to the to the tool. Okay, and the tool um, let us also characterize each uh, of the 
each of the of the of the tracks. Okay, let me put this down so I can manage. And here in the system, uh, uh, we can plot out a, a map with the uh, all identified points. So this is the track that uh, you, you have seen previous in, in Google Earth, which is rather uh, more uh, visual. And we, I'm going to choose another map, okay, because it's uh, better to understand. So this is again the track. And the system allow us to uh, identify each um, um, exposure point, possible exposure point, okay? So uh, how to identify the, and how to uh, 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 add a new uh, exposure point in, in, in our track, for example. So we went to the, to the exposure evaluation step, okay? Again, uh, the map has to be loaded. Let's go to the, okay, and we make, can make a zoom. And for example, so we have identified here different bridges and different uh, uh, infrastructures of the road, uh, which may have of interest uh, making the analysis. Okay, so we can identify different point, different type of infrastructures. Uh, uh, and different point of uh, yeah uh, vulnerable point. So we can identify uh, uh, drainage or uh, drainage rivers, uh, different type of uh, tarmac or pavement uh, infrastructure, uh, uh, lineal drainage, transversal drainage, um, um, overpasses or down passes, or even uh, yeah different type of slopes. Okay. Or even we can identify in this case because it was also a, 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 an open issue, different types of uh, winter maintenance uh, points where, for example, uh, we have a accumulation of snow in a certain point of accumulation of ice due to the uh, a shadow zone or whatever, uh, according to the uh, to the system and to the experience of the of the maintenances, so we can uh, the system allow us to identify one specific point. Like for example, uh, I'm going to make an example to create, uh, for example, one. Well, let's say one of these, for example. So we can identify it's in the kilometer point. Let's say 75 and it's a, a drainage system, okay? Okay, so we can, let's see where the system creates the, uh, so the systems. In the, in the, not in the bottom, but in the, in the upper. Here, okay. We can identify here, for example, one line. I think it's already created somewhere in the map. Okay, let me see where it is. Okay, here. Well, somehow uh, we are allowed to create different uh, type of uh, uh, vulnerable points, okay, and uh, and we can later um, here, uh, let me see if it's this one, well, we can, we can identify in the map, okay, and even we can identify in a table. Okay, so we we have identified all the all the exposure points, for example, according to the type of infrastructure. So, for example, in the case of uh, uh, slopes, we have different slopes created at different uh, kilometers along the the study track. Okay, we can erase them, we can modify them, and or add uh, some information about it. Okay. Uh, slopes, uh, uh, river flows, uh, different type of, uh, of platforms or tarmarks of uh, or uh, uh, asphalt uh, pavements. Okay, so 
and identify different problems. For example, um, um, not enough drainage capacity or problems by intense uh, rain or heavy rain or identify, for example, uh, physical problems of the of the pavements where uh, the formations due to heat waves or the formation to the elastic uh, behavior of the pavement. So different, uh, again, uh, um, transversal drainage, identifying different points along the road. So the system allowed us to, uh, um, to make uh, uh, groups of elements along the road and also this is the winter maintenance for example it's in spanish but well, the different points of uh, winter maintenance problems identify along along the road and which are uh, positioned in each uh, uh, so we can we can identify them in in the map okay as i already show you like for example here with different points and in the table okay so the first step, which is the exposure evaluation, it's uh, already done. I mean, because in this case, in this example, we have all the points already loaded into the system. And the second step will be uh, the hazard characterization. So we have identified the points along the road which may have problems due to the uh, different type of climate hazard, okay, which has been or, uh, already identified and also explained uh, let's see the map i'm going to show you how the maps works okay and also as uh, previously uh, explained by my colleagues by ernesto and laura and and according to the type of infrastructure why the map is not loading mm -hmm. so the maps is supposed to load maps okay uh, 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 uh. just wait a moment i i suppose it's going to uh... to load it takes time sometimes <laughs> yes uh yes okay here we are so we have identified the, the exposure points, the possible exposure points, and then right now we are going to make the uh, hazard characterization. So which is the hazard? The hazard are uh, the different climate indexes that we have uh, defined, which uh, may be important in a transport infra infrastructure and which, which, are, which are them. So uh, here we have them. So, uh, all of them uh, dealing with uh, precipitation mainly, heavy rains, rains, and uh, periods of, uh, uh, of, uh, of also intense wind. Okay, we're talking about the, an infrastructure, but in this case, in this specific case, the wind is not so important, but maybe in others uh, could be of interest. So included also one uh, climate index uh, regarding wind, strong winds. So mainly um, maximum daily temperature, uh, uh, percentile five of yeah of minimum daily temperature, um, thermal amplitude, uh, precipitation, uh, maximal pre precipitation in 24 hours, uh, maximal pre uh, cumulate precipitation in five days, and maximal. Uh, consecutive days with uh, precipitation okay so all of them for the for two uh, uh, climate scenarios for the RCP um, 8.5 and RCP 4.1 uh, 4.5 okay so we identify uh, climate indices regarding uh, precipitation and regarding temperature mainly so for example if I we make a we select uh, uh, for example, uh, maximum daily temperature, this one. So the system uh, get the values, okay, from each point along the road and give you an overview uh, uh, of the, of the, well, in this case, it's in the year 1970. Okay, so uh, past climate, 
but we can move along this uh, uh, bar up here and we can move along the years. So we can have estimations, okay? So we can see here, we have higher temperature down here because uh, mainly due to the, to the issue that I explained before that here are, we are at lower altitude that, that here we are talking about uh, almost 300 meters difference of altitude in between this uh, kilometer and this kilometer, okay? And we're talking about 70 kilometers uh, distance. And if we move uh, just to have um, to have uh, the um, to check the variation, so here you can see how the colors are changing, and we are getting higher temperatures in the in the estimations due to the climate change and specific for this uh, uh, climate index, which is the maximum temperature. And if we will move forward to year uh, 2040, come on here. So the systems again calculates, takes the data from the, from the base data where the, this percentile of uh, maximum temperature is uh, calculated and plotted into, into the system. Okay, and if we move forward to 2070, okay, which is, along the years, okay, we can feel the difference very good, okay? And for example, if we plot this all together, like for example, in this in this slide, let me see if I can plot this uh, to, yes, to the big uh, screen. So this is the percentage of, uh, of maximum temperature, uh, day, daily maximum temperature, 1970, 2010 and 2040 for the years RCP 8.5. So we can have an overview along a, a rather quite a large track, let's say, and we can think about how this may affect the infrastructure or not in the case of the temperature, okay? So uh, this is very good, okay? It's very visual, but we can also have the, the same data for each specific point. So if we go back to the table where all the uh, um, all the previous points were uh, uh, tabulated in a in a in a table, okay, and we select the the percentile uh, 95 for maximum daily temperature, okay. So for each identified point in the map, the system uh, calculates, go to the base data, and and comes with the data for the specific temperature in that point in that kilometer for the different uh, period scenarios from yeah 2040 2070 uh, um, and, and well uh, 2000 uh, um, uh, the year 2100 okay so we can have uh, uh, the system allow us to have uh, an overall overview for uh, any specific uh, climate index that we have previous calculated, okay, as was explained by, by Ernesto, by IMET. And right now, for example, I'm going to show you the precipitation, okay, maximal precipitation in 24 hours, for example, this one. Here we have the scale, the colors scale in millimeters day, okay. And let me see, okay, again, so, I think you can you can feel the difference. So we have lower precipitations here, higher pre precipitations along the, the, the as, as we are moving high high in the in the in the mountains. But for example, if we go to the estimations for 2040, so we are going to have more intense and and heavy rains all along the road. Okay, and even in 2070. So it seems that, uh, for example, if we have uh, right now, if we, if we in this track we have uh, some drainage problems or the pavement, the drainage of the pav pavement in certain points, it's uh, rather problematic right now. Yeah, if we continue with the same type of pavement and uh, or the potable systems or the drainage systems are not well maintenance or well. Uh, 
repaired or even increased, uh, we may have more problems along the years, okay? Because it seems, according to the estimations, that again, if we go to the table, just to have an, an, a specific overview of each point, okay, the systems goes to the to the base data and, and comes again with the, with the data of of how the well this is the maximum temperature i'm going to plot sorry the maximal precipitation in 24 hours okay so we can uh, for example if we want to do the to the drainage systems okay here for example let's wait to the systems to calculate to come back with the with the data so we are going to have uh, for example you can see this example. So we are increasing from 29 millimeters to 34. Well, it's not a rather big increase in precipitation, but uh, it's it, it's something that we have. Uh, I mean, the maintenance people and the people from the from the road maintenance or the or the truck system maintenance must be aware of. Okay, so uh, again, so we have uh, the step one, we have uh, the exposure evaluation, the health characterization, and then uh, the system allow us to uh, to make the, the vulnerability analysis, okay? So again, and, and, and also as previous uh, uh, explained by, by Laura, in this case, they are not an specific, we, we haven't identified any specific uh, <clears throat> Um, formula or simulation for uh, for the vulnerability analysis, and we uh, the system we decide to uh, to design a system according to uh, to the like for example in this case it's, it's a track uh, it's a road it's not a new uh, design of a road but it's a road which has been exploited uh, during the last uh, ten years okay so it's an open track and we have data from from the exploitation and maintenance issues. So the system allowed us to, uh, well, to, to characterize each uh, uh, element, each point, and we can uh, define, or we, uh, the designers, the engineers, or the, uh, the, the, the road maintenance experts may um, uh, make the exercise to, uh, to define the, the the vulnerability so uh, for each point for each point in the map which uh, we have previously identified uh, in the map in the table and also in in this table we can define the um, integrity of the of the of the specific infrastructure from zero to six so uh, from inexistent one to very important six so we can define the severity and the probability of uh, the 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 issue to happen in this specific uh, point. So from one very very uh, weak uh, to occur, and five, it's uh, very probable to uh, to occur. So uh, so we can uh, define also the integrity of the element along the years and according to the uh, to the to the data to the climate data that we have previously analyzed so we have to 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 look into to make the previous exercise which is we have mm, all the elements of the road we have analyzed them uh, with the hata characterization and we uh, i mean the expert uh, uh, criteria decided if the integrity and the severity of the of the exposure to the climate um, index, uh, specific index is uh, 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 rather severe or or weak, and along the year. So for uh, for the different uh, uh, period uh, scenarios in years, so from year uh, up to 2040, 2070, and or to 2100. Okay. And even though the system uh, also depending on the uh, we have defined what is called the uh, well uh, traffic uh, conditions um, um, operation or uh, traffic operation conditions. How this, how the integrity of this element may affect the uh, um, the, the traffic conditions. Okay, so uh, and and how how may affect the, the severity and the probability to occur. I will explain this better with with uh, with a picture. 
from 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 the road okay for example if we go to the uh, to the first point of the of the track uh, for example here ha we have identified several uh, exposure points like for example this slope okay we have here a slope which has been identified and it's a slope which is uh, with a rather let's say uh, er erosion um, soil okay which may have problems but how this may affect, or if if we if this uh, soil collapse into the road may affect their circulation. Where, well, well, for example, the 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 it may not cause uh, a, a big uh, issue into the circulation as it is not in the main track of the of the road. But for example, if we go to this one, okay, this other one, which is in another specific point, okay, what may happen if this slope collapse? Or part of it collapse into the uh, due to the or heavy rains or uh, or uh, uh, well or uh, mainly not a good drainage of the system and so on. Well, was here the 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 affection to the traffic or or to the yeah to the circulation it's much much higher. So this is also the system allow us to to identify it and to define. For example, here, okay. So we can identify the severity and the probability to occur for each uh, uh, specific action area. And well, uh, and the next step in the system, the 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 the, the fourth step, the system calculates uh, according to the according to the climate uh, evaluation and according to the to the data that we have uh, introduced in the table. It uh, creates a matrix, okay, where uh, each element of the road has been identified and 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 the risk assessment is being calculated from high, medium, low, or negligible, okay, despreciable in 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 Spanish. So the system uh, plot us for each specific point of the road. And according to the climate indexes that we have calculated and we have identified to uh, to be important in this type of tra transport infrastructure, okay, how uh, these elements are being uh, uh, identified due to the risk and, and and climate risk impact and assessment, okay. Again, the system allow us to to plot the systems in a table or. Uh, we can uh, have a look to the to the track. Okay, I'm going to plot the other the other map where we have a better view of the system. So, for example, in this case, and according to the to the type of uh, of uh, Exposure point that we have defined. We have defined also the here the the system plot as different colors, where the risk is uh, medium, high, or 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 low. Okay, red for high risk. In this case, here we have the pavement in in red because we have identified here the winter maintenance issues, and also the the uh the drainage systems as as you as as you can see from the beginning okay that uh, we are going to have more intensive rains along the years in, in how is the predictions coming on so here the system uh, tell us that we must take care of the drainage systems or the winter maintenance systems along the road uh, uh, apart from kilometer whatever kilometer okay here so it makes differences so you can you can identify or you can make an uh, vulnerability assessment of in a map or in a table as as it was uh, plotted here okay for each point of the road so and to finalize the the, the last step of the of the methodology and the last step of the system is just to uh uh, to propose different uh, and to identify the different adaptation options, uh, try to mitigate uh, the possible risk identified according to different climate indexes that uh, has been uh, studied for this type of of infrastructure and and for this specific track. So, 
the system allow us to uh, propose and to identify different adaptation options uh, according to the type of of uh, of infrastructure and in this case and for the traffic uh, for the traffic issue we are working on uh, incorporating to the system uh, different uh, let's see here different adaptation options uh, according to different uh, uh, identify uh, problems uh, regarding slopes regarding drainage uh, incapacity or uh, regarding uh, uh, well problems of uh, yeah mainly this type of those type of, of problems has been identified in in, in this road tra highway track infrastructure so uh, we are on the way to incorporate this into the system just to um, to evaluate to to and to model how these uh, um, adaptation options may decrease the risk in this type of infrastructure okay and uh, i think i i made a, an approach from all these five um, steps of the system I think that uh, that's all for from from my side. I mean, the system is has the powerful to uh, to analyze uh, different yeah uh, climate index indexes along a, a specific highway track. Again, uh, it's it's also valid for road infrastructures and also for uh, 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 railway infrastructures. I don't know if you were planning also, Luis and, and Dennis, to make a, an approach to the to the railway uh, example, but as I think we are we are uh, behind schedule, I think we can we can. Well, this is all from 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 my side, I would say. We we cannot hear you, Dennis. Yeah, that's that's because I was muted. Okay. So thanks, Fain. And uh, please, uh, the rest of you, could you join us? Hey, Fain, come back. We we have the final discussion. <laughs> Laura, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and that, so. Just uh, just a few uh, a few remarks. The, the information we know we have uh, seen uh, uh, with uh, Jose Cubillo is uh, it's handwritten uh, uh, all in Spanish, but uh, the the system allows you to 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 show the the information in uh, in English. It depends on the configuration you have on the on the on the browser you do you have. So the, all information is uh, in English if, uh, if you're not uh, Spanish. Right now there are only these two 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 languages. Let's say the uh, Spanish and uh, and English, but uh, it's uh, quite uh, quite easy to, to to incorporate new to new 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 idioms into the into the system. Um, uh, the information for Spain is based on uh, on the information that uh, that uh, IMET has uh, calculated in the in the project, but the information for all over Europe is the information that the uh, Meteorological Institute of uh, of Austria has uh, calculated in the system. Okay, okay. thanks. <laughs> now. I think uh, one one thing is uh, interesting to mention. Uh, when I compare this traffic application, the screening with the urban screening, uh, what I notice is that on one side, uh, the traffic application is, let's say, more appropriate for uh, for really using it in uh, daily work. It's uh, it's more aligned with the way the engineers work. But on the other hand, it's uh, doing less actual calculations. So uh, in this traffic application at the moment, it's mostly, I mean, it can be, it can be in my opinion, described in a short term as uh, we show the, uh, the engineer in charge of road uh, what they want to see. 
and then it's up to them to decide uh, what is really uh, the part which needs more attention or not and the system will happily accept their input and uh, make it presentable uh, in a in a printable form as a report in the end is this correct in your opinion as as a current status of work Yes, I think it, it's correct in, in my opinion. I mean, uh, in the urban uh, in the urban screening, uh, we have developed uh, uh, a thorough uh, tool in order to do, to to calculate the, the vulnerability of the of the different elements. Here we are based on uh, on the um, uh, on the opinion of uh, of the of the engineers that uh, maintain the, the the road is uh, there is not uh, vulnerability functions but uh, there is not vulnerability functions because uh, there is quite difficult to do to uh, to define uh, vulnerability functions for for the elements of, of a road i think uh, the difference is that we have a lot of possible vulnerable elements with very different typologies and also we have a, a wide range of impacts. Uh, however, I think we have to continue working on the uh, giving some hints to assess the sensitivity we were talking previously. Yes, I, I hope that uh, we will manage to, to start some exploitation with what we have now. It seems to be quite useful. And for the future, it would be really good if, uh, if this would be then extended with some hints. Uh, and I, I really say hints because looking at uh, what we learned in the project, just saying, okay, this is how it is to the experts, probably not the best approach but telling them well you know we believe that this is slightly or very much uh, sensitive to rain or to, to uh, freezing or to high temperature but if you don't believe so you are able to change it and then let us calculate what the results are uh, I think that this is probably the best approach for the future <clears throat> And in addition to this, uh, we discussed already uh, sensors. I mean, the reality is as it is, and uh, we can always approximate it by models, but in the future, we will need to, to incorporate the results from sensors to see how near or how far we were from in the last uh, round and then improve based on that. And I think in that way, with the time, we can make a really amazingly good tool from, from what we have at the moment. I also think it's, uh, I would like to point that it's important to count with a, a good uh, expert panel to do the, the assessment, someone who really knows the road. But also, if you want to do a more detailed uh, analysis, uh, it's good to to have people who know from drainage and people who know about uh, geotechnics, and this will give um, more uh, support to the to the assessments. There was actually one among these questions, which was like, uh, uh, well, from my old friend Mark. Like, hey, but what do you do with debris? Because in certain uh, configurations, the debris will come down uh, the hill and this will be the main problem you have. And uh, I think that modeling this is relatively difficult. You have to model on a very, very tiny scale, but knowing where the debris will come, because that's where it comes every year, is something which is probably much easier and uh, so it can be taken either from existing knowledge of the expert or from sensor measurements and that way it can be then combined with the simpler models. Yeah, I agree with you. Jaime, Feynman's last uh, words for you. Well, uh, I hope that uh, we, we we achieve to um, to explain the powerful of the tool. I think uh, 
especially regarding for for uh, traffic infrastructure for roads which are already built and are also exploited uh, it's a good uh, um, methodology and tool for make the assessment that uh, just to mention also the at least in spain the regional administrations are starting to be aware of this uh, yeah, uh, vulnerability, risk and vulnerability assessment of uh, due to climate change in infrastructures. And I hope that this tool may help to make uh, these studies regarding the, yeah, uh, regarding the possible impacts of different climate indexes, at least the ones that we have uh, reported here, uh, could be used for um, for make um, estimations and yeah and, and 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 try to redesign some part of the of this uh, transport infrastructure if needed. Okay, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, that's it. There is. Let me see if there are any new questions. No, I, I don't oh, think just so. Some comments uh, from people thanking us, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Good, then I would say uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks for the presenters as well, and hope to see you on another webinar of ours. Thank you, bye. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. bye, -bye. Well.